This is what I call the final stages and I have worked on this you know for a pretty long time. The cool thing about when you start a painting like this um, in that way which I call the play stage there are no expectations. There is no need to critique or judge what you're doing. You have just every opportunity to do anything you want and the reason why that works is well I should say that it does work if you understand <laughs> where you're trying to get to in the process of the painting itself. I mean, if you start that way and, and you, um, you know, throw everything at it, that, that's great, but if you don't know how to create the powerful design, the strong design, you know, the strong composition, you know, it's gonna be a bit of a struggle. So I'm just offering this series of videos that show the process that I go through, which begins with play, yes, and that allows me to have a lot of freedom, but then I move into Explore, which I've shown you with this painting, and in the Explore stage, it's kind of, it's kind of um, still a bit spontaneous and still fun, still having a bit of play, but it's with a little bit more thought, and the, the thought comes from asking yourself some very key questions and I outline this in my Powerful Design Personal Color course. And they're very important questions because it's the questions themselves that move you forward. So now I'm in the stage that I would consider to be called Final Touches. And the reason for that is the values have become quite clear and the shapes for me are pretty different and interesting. However, there's definitely room for improvement, but at this point, I do kind of slow down. I like to revisit the painting, you know, day after day and kind of sneak up on it like a lot of you do as well. And my first feeling, like when I look at this, I do like what's going on. I like the fact that it's primarily high key and I like, you know, the, the very interesting and unusual shapes. I like the mark making, but what I noticed when I put this into black and white, which I can show you here, is the relative size of the shapes that are going around the perimeter of the painting are kind of about the same size. And I just feel like that is, a, it feels to me like there are a bunch of big piranhas that are circling some tiny minnows in the middle. So when I see that, and sometimes I can better see that when it's in black and white, that's one of the reasons why I like to uh, convert into black and white many, many times throughout the process, not just in final stages, but you know, when I'm exploring, even after play, why not? It, it doesn't hurt to know where you're at and how, I think when you convert a painting at any stage into black and white, it is a snapshot of not what the color is doing, but what the value of color is doing. And if you always know where you're at, you know, like in the play stage, you should expect to be very unclear with your values. They should be very chaotic. And, and they shouldn't be clear in most cases, unless, you know, you're lucky that can happen too, but so, and then when you move into explore, you know, there's gonna be some, uh, I'd say movement of the values. They should be shifting um, perhaps by the end of the explore stage toward a pretty predominant value because that is kind of what we do in the explore stage. But by the time you get to final touches, you know, your value pattern should be pretty solid and the things that you do become smaller and, and they're more fine tuning and, you know, changes that are not as noticeable. So it, when I talk about this painting, I'm going to be visiting, you know, every 
literally every square inch of this painting and deciding, you know, even if there are extraneous marks that perhaps are not that visible, do they need to be there? You know, does this shift in value need to be there? Does this shift in color need to be there? Does this edge of the shape need to be adjusted so that it's not feeling all one way? And what is the movement within the painting? Is my eye circling around this painting and keeping me entertained? Is it keeping the viewer entertained? Or am I giving an exit, like an open door to my viewer? You're like, hey, go ahead and go to the next painting because I've just given you an, an open door. So I don't want to leave any open doors. And um, so I'm going to be doing some final things here. And it's a gradual process. So when you do one thing, and some of these things that I'm gonna do, I have actually been playing around with Photoshop and sometimes Procreate. They allow me to try things out without actually painting, right? So it's a digital version. And I hear sometimes people say, yeah, but I have like 50 versions of the digital, right? And you know, that can happen too. But I think the longer that you paint, you kind of know, you have a, a sense, you have intuition that can only come from painting a long period of time, making lots of mistakes and knowing what just didn't work. You know, you, I'm sure that a lot of times we try things that we've tried before to solve a painting and maybe they worked in the last painting, but they're not gonna work this time. It's like no two children are ever alike. You Just because you raised a child one way doesn't mean you can identically raise the, the second child in the very same way. Each painting is its own set of challenges, problem solving, and to me that's what keeps painting fresh because you, you don't really want, you know, you really don't want to be in that situation where every single, you know, you're just like wheeling out the paintings and every movement you make, the process you go through is kind of like a formula. I mean, that's fine, I guess, if, if that, turns you on but for me personally that would really bore me and I, I know I'd stop painting so I just have to keep trying things that are different and so one thing I'm noticing in this painting is the pink shape in this area I'm going to be creating something called gradation gradation is not something I talk about a lot it's one of the design principles not the design elements but it's a principle we all know what the word gradation means but when it comes to painting Sometimes we have it, sometimes we don't, but it's one of those things that it can really be a very nice transitional thing to try. And what I notice with that pink shape, it's not changing in value. So by when I talk about gradation, I want to push value. Um, I want to gradate the value, not so much the color itself. The color can stay pretty much the same. Although when you change the value, you know, it's still the same family of pink. I'm not going to be going from like mid-tone pink to mid-tone green to middle light pink. I mean, there's no, no real need to change the color, but there is a need in my opinion to change the value of that shape. So I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to be looking at the edges and softening some because I feel like right now I was pretty hard edged all the way around most of these shapes. I did try to make some of them softer by rubbing paint with my gloved hand. You can do that. Uh, that certainly works, but I'm really going to be scrutinizing the edges and make sure there's a lot of variety, but a dominance of one edge over the other, like hard versus soft, because if I have, you know, half and half, then I talk about that feeling like these two things are at odds. They're at war with each other and one really does need to win. So other things I'm looking at are, I right now what I like that's going on is I was pretty heavy handed with my RNF pigment sticks because I wanted some very nice, thick, juicy areas of paint. And then I also, uh, with regular paint and a silicone tool, I, you know, like in this lower right hand area, you can see the white is quite impasto like that was done on purpose because I wanted to have an area that really came forward and felt a little bit 3D. Those little gray circles on the bottom, they're also pretty thick and you know, I, they were done with the RNF pigment stick 
and I went around those shapes again and again to build up the paint. So, um, and then mark making, you know, I have a, a certain amount of line right now. Some of those lines are gouged in and some of them are superficial and that they're on the surface of the painting. Some of the lines are thick, some are thin, some are rectilinear, some are curvilinear. So those things are all, you know, working for me, but you know, do I need as much line as I have? Do I need to push some back or do I need to add some? It's if I do anything at this point, it's for a reason. It's not anymore just kind of like a like a playful thing. It's it's um an intentional thing. There would be a reason for me to add something at this point or subtract it. And both of those decisions, whether it is addition or subtraction, are for a reason. Um, unlike the play stage where, no, there is no reasoning behind anything you do. I'd say the explore stage is kind of half and half. You're partly thinking, but you're also still very much um, just trying to push boundaries and get step out of your comfort zone. It'll lead to things that create problems you've never had before. And that's when, to me, it pushes that sense of creativity. Like what, if, if necessity is a mother of invention, if that is what causes us to be most creative, then I feel we need to do things that cause us to step out of that comfort zone. So we're pushed into a new area of necessity that we've never been in before. Um, so I just thought I would share some of the things I'm gonna do. And um, I hope you enjoy um, the process of clarify and final touches. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is come into this lower pink shape here and work some gradation into this. So I'm gonna try and match that very same value. If the color's a little bit off, you know, I wanna have something that's the same reddish tones, but if the color's a little bit off, that's not gonna be so important as the value. I need to match the value. So that's where all the work that you do, you work so hard to understand how to work with value. This is one of those times where value and all that you understand about how to mix a value just you know on demand basically and, and that comes from a lot of practice um, it is during this time when it really pays off it doesn't always pay off in the earlier stages because the knowledge you have you know when you're playing it it doesn't really matter too much but um, when you're trying to finish a painting it largely comes down to understanding and understanding it really well how to mix a value that you need this is my Gelka gel and cold wax medium. Here's my quick dry white and it's gambling color. I've got my spatula here and let's see here. I'm just gonna open this up. And I'm mixing, you know, this is one to three. Uh, one part of the Gelka gel to three parts of cold wax medium. That's my typical ratio. And here's the white. Okay, so I'm gonna mix you know, up to one to one. So I just eyeball it. Whenever you do a painting that ends up being really high key like this one, you do go through an awful lot of white. So I have all, a lot of different kinds of white. I have uh, titanium white and I have titanium zinc white, which dries a little bit faster. It's also a little bit more transparent, but I don't really worry too much about you know all the different whites because I, I can tint them, I can warm them up or cool them down, whatever it takes, whatever I want. So now you've seen that pink area. It's a mid-tone. It's almost smack dab in the middle. And I don't need a whole lot of this color that I'm going to try and do the gradation with. So I just you know take some of that white aside that I've mixed, put the lid back on my, my mixture here. And I'm gonna just start off with, obviously, um, pink. It comes from red and white, and this is perylene red. Um, this is the color that, you know, is kind of the, provided the reds in this painting. So I'm gonna stick with that. And um, just put a little bit out here. It's so little that I'm not gonna add, you know, cold wax medium here to that because I'm just gonna be using such a small amount to get to the pink that I need. Um, hopefully that's not too much. <laughs> Uh, the tinting is going to happen. Uh, you tint with white and I mean this is already going 
to be a very high key value. That's good. I wanted that. And in order to do a gradation, I'm going to need to have, you know, a darker color here. So I know some, I'm going to use black and I, um, I know some artists don't like to use black, but for me, it's a quick and easy way to get these gradations here of tone. And I'm going to use my, I usually use ivory black, so I'm just going to use that. There's ivory black, lamp black, spinel black. There's a lot of different black pigments, but um, so I'm going to put that out. And again, I'm going for gradation. So what I need to do is be able to match that pink that I have. This is definitely the high key end. And then, you know, what I want is to take some of this and go on the low end. So I'm going to add some of this black. I don't want to add too much, but just enough to get it to that mid-tone area where it is right now. Need more red. Now I could get there with just adding more black, but I, you know, then it's not going to have as much of that, that pinkish tone. And I, I definitely want there to, I'm trying to match what I have there as close as I can. So I'm making sure that I'm not desaturating it too much with the black. So it does take a bit of time to get that right color. And I might have added a bit of, you know, yellow to this. So I've, I've been using Indian yellow in here. Maybe I need to add a little bit more Indian yellow to get that exact pink. But then what I do, just take a little bit of this and I want to test and see where I'm at. So then I walk up to the painting probably still way too light, but I still want to just get kind of a feeling for where I'm at. So I just kind of go on top of there and it's obviously too light. So I'm going to keep mixing until I get darker. Okay. So just newsprint here. I've cut some masks like this. There's some stripes and they're all a little different width. Um, here's one like this. Here's another one. I mean, some of them, you know, they're, they're fairly close actually in size. It, it's, it's okay because I have other ways of offsetting that. I just cut a couple of these. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to do this. Okay. So here's the, this pink that I mixed and I'm hoping, you know, let's see here. Oh, well, it's, yeah. Wow. That's pretty close. <laughs> this is going to be barely noticeable from what was already there. It's almost a perfect match in value, but um, that's okay because now that I've matched it or close enough, um, you know, you can barely see it and that's okay. Now what I do is I, I'm going to do a gradation. I'm going from dark to light. So I need to add a little bit of white to this master pile here. Um, here's where I added more of that, this lighter value here. I just want to, I wanted this shape to kind of be accentuated a little bit more. So it needs to be a little lighter. Otherwise it's not showing very well. Here I've got a very hard edge. So if I wanted to just soften that, I can take my finger with the right value of color and just like this is, um, it's a light value and I just soften the edge, you know, with my finger and it, it's no longer going to be that hard edge. It's going to be kind of a softer blended edge. It's amazing how little things like that really do matter, even though what I'm doing, like you may not even be able to really see it very well. It's when you're up close and like standing in front of this painting that, you know, you're really going to be able to see it. So, and then if I did too much, then I can just simply subtract. So it's adding and subtracting that edge got a little bit too carried away. So now I've replaced that hard edge um, with a soft edge. I want to try something with the shape up here. stand back because I can't always see what I'm doing. 
And right away, I like it better because now that shape is broken up and it is a dark and light area, so it's definitely gonna draw the eye. I lost some of my lines, so I can, but some of these were gouged in, so I can just simply go over them again. Here is a close-up of what's happened with this little shape here. You can kind of see I just put in some new marks into the thick paint. There's how thick the paint is over there. There's a gradation. Kind of bleeds into the background. There is the enhanced white around that circle there. And then here's a close-up of that shape. Again, it's um, it's a little rough right now because it's it's um, really opaque and I can't really sand into that until it's drier, but here's that mark that I put back in. I just uh, took my white woody and, you know, made that mark again. And over here, this shows you the edge that I made a little softer. And then I also made I believe it was, um, it was this area here that I made softer, so you can kind of see how I smeared paint right there and made that edge softer. That's not hard at all. I think it's really getting there though. I'm feeling better as I squint. Um, probably there are just some final, final things. And one thing I noticed is it's this stripey area of the green and the gray. Here's a close-up of that stripey area. I mean, it has interest. It's not that it's so bad, but you know, I've got all these stripes and they're all kind of the same values, same everything. So I'm gonna pull some of those stripes away, make them pop a little bit by changing the value. Now you can kind of see, this is the color that I've mixed. It's a limey green. Sometimes I'll work off my palette knife and just, I just wanna make some of these pop a little bit. You know, talking about edges, I can blur that a little bit. Okay, so bit by bit, I'm just making these little changes. Um, they're pretty small, but when you're up close, I think they really matter. Thanks everyone.